So welcome to a uh, World My Loan Forum Expert Panel. Um, it's a pleasure to have everybody here. We're going to try and review some of the abstracts from ASH 2017. So before we get started, just as a quick introduction for uh, all of our viewers. Sagalonio from Emory. Susan Lynch from Columbia University, New York. Ellie Rich from Washington University in St. Louis. From Ola Langwer from Sloan Kettering in New York. Excellent. Welcome. So coming out of ASH, there's lots of new data from novel therapies, which is really important. I think as we moving forward in myeloma, we had multiple novel therapies developed over the last decade. Now continued new novel therapies coming, including venetoclax, Selinexor, and the BCMA ADC presented by Dr. Trudell. So I'd like to review some of that data and what that means now for potential future and the hope that we have moving forward in myeloma and how that fits in and what you think is some of that data. So Dr. Lonely, your thoughts on the venetoclax data? Yeah, uh, at this meeting, uh, Jonathan Kaufman presented an updated expansion cohort of 20 patients who received venetoclax and DEX in an 1114 subset of patients. And previously, it's been shown that venetoclax in the 1114 subset has a response rate of about 40%. And laboratory work suggests the most synergistic partner for venetoclax is DEX. Uh, and so, based on that, this expansion cohort was enrolled. It looks like the response rate for venetoclax dex in the 1114 subset is close to 70 percent, which really speaks to the power of that biology that we talked about before, as well as the synergy between these two agents. No tumor lysis was seen in terms of a clinical tumor lysis, uh, and there were some pretty advanced patients that were in that because there is a ramp up dosing going up to a total dose of 800 milligrams. But you know, this has become a really important almost first salvage for some of those 1114 patients that we see. Uh, based on this really exciting data. And the durability on those patients, I know some nice response rates, and are those patients remaining on therapy? Yeah, they are. I mean, it's too early to know the, the PFS right now because, sure. again, it's a relatively short follow-up. Uh, but, you know, I think it's important to remember the 1114 subset of patients used to be considered good risk, yep. and they've now moved to intermediate based on the fact that all the other groups of patients have passed them by with all the new drugs that we have. The 1114s have sort of been left behind, and this may be a way to bring them, to catch them back up. I found uh, the presentation from Suzanne Trudel yesterday evening very interesting. Um, she used um, in her clinical trial um, an antibody against BCMA. I think it's a very interesting concept. So in addition to bispecific antibodies or CAR T cells, BCMA might also be a target for antibodies that are conjugated to certain medications. In her case, she conjugated um, the BCMA antibody to a microtubule disrupting agent, so a direct cytotoxic, cytotoxic agent, presented data on 35 patients, heavily pretreated patients, and a response rate of 60%. Um, I found the data very intriguing. Again, it, it opens up the new area of immunotherapy with using certain antigens on myeloma cells. Uh, for different purposes, such as CAR T cells, bite cells, or antibodies uh, di directly coupled with toxic agents. Yeah, I agree. I think that if you can get off an off-the-shelf product to uh, target BCMA, it becomes logistically much more easier. Uh, obviously, we don't have any data on how durable uh, responses are with uh, targeting these using different modalities. Uh, but BCMA certainly has become a hot target uh, uh, for uh, development. I think uh, one of the things with uh, MMAF-based uh, uh, conjugates has been uh, some ocular toxicity, corneal toxicity, which was also seen in this uh, study. So we just have to see uh, how the data evolves. But certainly, the response rates were very uh, exciting. I think uh, uh, the data that you, you talk about is very exciting. Uh, to add some additional perspectives, I think uh, the venetoclax drug uh, this is now a drug that could go for a subset of the patients with myeloma. We know myeloma bi biology is very diverse across yeah. the board. Every patient has a different myeloma than all the other patients. There are so many subsets. So we know venetoclax is a BCL2 inhibitor. In patients who have activation of the BCL program, that drug would make sense. There were other earlier studies where this drug was given to patients who did not have it, and it doesn't really work. And of course, it makes sense if, if you don't have sure. the target, you don't really see anything. So I think. Uh, to me, we will also need to develop biomarkers to see who, who could really benefit from these drugs that are very targeted. I think that's an important uh, step going forward. And I agree with uh, both uh, 
Ravi and Susan about the, uh, the fact that the BCMA is becoming an increasingly hot topic. We have the CAR T cells, we have the antibody conjugates and, and the bites. There are additional conjugates that we have not heard about yet, but they are starting up. Sure. Uh, and it will be interesting to see if, if the blurry vision is a class effect or if it's dependent on, on the conjugate uh, that you have linked uh, to these antibodies. Sure. So much more to come. I think one of the other things is the 11 proteins are about 50% of amyloid and enriched in plasma leukemia, so there may be more uh, to come on that. So two additional questions out of this. One is um, your experience with Selenexor, and that was the other novel therapy that was presented with the STOP data, looking at Selenexor in combination with lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and daratumab. So your thoughts around that uh, was one question. And the other question I was going to have is when we target BCMA, is it, and we talk about the data, we talk about CAR T cells and now the ADC, so is it really just a target that we're going after? And so it may not matter if we're using which technology or which platform, so is it really speaking to the target or how do we differentiate that as we move forward? So on both those questions, your experience with cell next row from or interpretation of the cell next row data, as well as is it BCMA the target or is it these platforms? And if we get to the same point with a BCMA ADC or a BITE or a CAR, is it really just speaking to that versus the platform, and how do we choose which platform we move forward with? So. I think that's a difficult question. Yeah. Um, we know that antibodies work. We know that there are tutumab is very effective, but we also know that CD38 as a target is downregulated pretty fast after you start the tutumab treatment. So the, the effect and the mechanism is not quite clear. You could hypothesize once you lose your target, the antibody should not work, but that's not the case. So in terms of BCMA, there are a lot of open questions. I think BCMA is a very nice target because it's very unique for myeloma cells. And there's a question whether we could even use this for MRD testing because it's uniquely ex expressed on myeloma cells. And there are publications that show if you have high BCMA expression, you have a poor prognosis. So I, I don't think that we can clearly kind of, you know, have an answer as of now. Sure. Uh, I think it's a very attractive target. That's, that's all what I can say. And there are a lot of other evolving targets. So there are SLAMF6 antibody conjugates. So that would partly answer the question whether it's beneficial to have one target over the other. There are also CD38 uh, antibody conjugates coming. And uh, there are bites that go for BCMA and CD3. There are bites for CD38 and CD3 coming. So it's, it has just started this whole race. And I think we will learn much more in the coming 24 months or something like that. And I think that uh, targeting the same antigen by different modalities may lead to different consequences in terms of durability. I think uh, if you look at the ALL data, uh, the, uh, where we have both uh, CAR T cell and uh, bite approved, it appears that the bite works better for the, uh, when the disease is debulked uh, and doesn't uh, usually work very well, at least not long term, for uh, more bulky disease, whereas the CAR Ts do. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I agree. I think BCMA is a target, and yeah. we may use different strategies depending upon what, what, where the patient is in the disease course. Sure. Maybe different up front than it is in relapse. I think the other agent that sort of struck me at this, and we've been hearing about this for a while, is the use of Selenexor, the, 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 the nuclear transport expo inhibitor, uh, which I think is really interesting because it does have single agent activity. It partners nicely with dexamethasone. But the combination therapy is what we really saw the STOMP trial. Um, and I was really struck with the ability to potentially overcome drug resistance through combinations, particularly with proteasome inhibitors, but also in combination with imids like lenalidomide and pomalidomide. Well, I think that it is a conceptually also a very interesting target uh, that a lot of the uh, tumor suppressors use this nuclear transport XPO1 to uh, get out of the nucleus and keeping the nuclear, uh, the suppressors within the nucleus may at least theoretically uh, be advantageous. And what I found was that uh, it appears that the once weekly dose is better tolerated in terms of the GI toxicity. <laughs>